But then our friend from the Washington Post, Dave Weigel, he jumped into the fray. Dave Weigel. Now, Dave Weigel's the guy who smeared me and said that I was pushing Seth Rich conspiracy when I wasn't. We covered that story. Ron, you were here. We covered that story in real yeah. time when the when the fi- private investigator approved by the Seth Rich family uh, came out and gave a press conference. We covered that press conference, and the next day, we debunked him. And then Dave Weigel is paid by Jeff Bezos to try to smear real progressives, so he puts my name in the middle of an article and says that. That's who Dave Weigel is, just so you want to know who this guy Dave Weigel is. He's the lead reporter for Jeff Bezos and the Washington Post, a political reporter. That's who, He's a pro-war, pro-Iraq war, pro war guy. He used, to, he used to literally do pro-Iraq war rallies. That's who Dave Weigel is, just so you know. And he was a Republican until Trump. He's one of those guys. Okay? Uh, he says, Dor used to work at TYT, whose founder co-founded the most effective organization for replacing centrist Democrats with leftists in my lifetime. Justice Democrats. The whole losing means actually winning thing seems less fun than, you know, actually winning, which the Justice Democrat does. That's what he said. That's what he's saying. That's what that's what he's saying. Um, It's the only organization trying to replace Democrats with leftists in your lifetime, Dave. Other leftists run in other smaller parties, just so you know, the the, those are the this. (laughs) The most effective organization for replacing centrist Democrats. Well, Dave, first of all, uh, as Glenn Greenwald pointed out, the other co-founder of the Justice Democrats is Kyle Kalinsky, who supports my strategy. Now, that's Dave lying by omission. That's Dave not telling you that part, because that's what Dave does. He lies by omission. All the time. Plus, he's flat out lies, too. We've we've documented that. Go to Jimmy Dore, uh, YouTube, Jimmy Dore, Dave Weigel. We've documented him out, outright lying. In fact, here's one of the lies we documented him lying about. By the way, Glenn Greenwald dunking on Dave Weigel. That's like LeBron James beating a toddler in one on one. That's what that is. <laughs> so, you know that Jeff Bezos is, has a huge business with the CIA, and they don't tell their readers at the Washington Post. So, that's by Norman Solomon. So, that's a big conflict of interest. And Dave doesn't want you to worry about who owns what media and what platforms, who's on what, but he just went to a ramble about me and TYT. So Dave, Dave Weigel at the Washington Post would say this doesn't matter, that his boss, but he would say he just rambled about me and TYT and that I used to work there. I thought platforms didn't matter, Dave, because that's what he's going to say. Because if you look here, Amazon's considering suing over loss of a $10 billion Pentagon track contract after Trump, Trump's attacks on Bezos. Hey, maybe Bezos will start a GoFundMe and you can all give it, give to him. And then Dave Bezos, D- Dave Weigel will tweet it out. <laughs> uh, during the pandemic, Jeff Bezos became $78 billion richer while denying paid sick leave and hazard pay to over 450,000 Amazon workers. 20,000 of them got COVID-19. Truly gross. That's who he is. And that's who Dave Weigel works for. He's not allowed to criticize. and. Um, there he is. There's Dave Weigel doing a pro, pro-war. pro That's him. Uh, Students for War is an ad hoc committee recently set up to build support across the country for military action. That was Dave Weigel doing that. Students for War. Guess what, Dave? If you wanted war so bad, why didn't you go fight in it, Dave? Oh, that's right. Because he's a cul-de-sac coward. Northwestern University junior Dave Weigel, also editor-in-chief of the campus's weekly Northwestern Chronicle, organized a group of about 25 people over email to counter an anti-war protest on campus last week. Dave Weigel wants to oppose the anti-war protest when he calls anti-American movement. The effect of not letting the media treat it like a burgeoning anti-war. So he's a big. So here's Dave Weigel. National. That's him. National reporter. You see that, Ron, right? Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I wonder, and why is he? Why does he sew up Jimmy Dore's ass? Because I exposed Dave Weigel. Because the Amazon Washington Post they have a six million, hundred million dollar contract. And on Twitter, a guy named Russ Lewis called Dave Weigel out for, "Hey, you work for a guy who has a six hundred million dollar contract with the CIA." And Dave Weigel lied about it, and he said, "No, we don't." And the guy said, "Well, here's here's an article, and it was from HangTheBankers.com." 
And Dave Weigel says, well, I can hardly brush aside the reporting of hangthebankers.com. So he's denying that he's denying this. That's the Washington Post lead reporter is denying a fact. And the fact is compromising about his newspaper because the guy who owns it is in bed with the CIA to the tune of six hundred million dollars. Way more now. But he was denying it. He was denied. Here he is denying it. That's their lead reporter. I caught him lying about a, a super important fact, a super conflict, a big conflict of interest. So then Russ Lewis went and he went and got another. Uh, he went and got zero heads. I got another article because nobody would write about this. Right. In fact, this one got scrubbed. We had to go to the Wayback Machine to get that. Did you know that? That got scrubbed. Oh, no, I didn't know that. Yeah. No. So Rusty Lewis says, here you go, Mr. Professional Reporter that apparently knows nothing about his own newspaper. And Dave Weigel says, it was Bezos, not the Post. Now go away. So he doesn't think that's a big deal. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, it's not a big deal when he's involved. So it, that's only a big deal for other people. Yes, so that's who it's a big deal when it's you or TYT, but when it's him, but when it's him and it's his paper and that's not a big deal and go away. In fact, you just caught me lying about it. So I reported that. And so Dave Weigel's had a hard on for me ever since. And in fact, I think Dave Weigel should see a doctor because I think he's had a hard on for me for over four years now. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. So, uh, in fact, Dave Weigel tweeted this out. So we 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 uh, we did a video about him about a, mu a month ago. He tweeted this out. Uh, someone said to him, they tweeted a video that we did about him and said, I, I know never to read anything you post or write. Piece of shit. That was by uh, Richard J. Hoban. That's on October 26th. And this guy says, wait, Jimmy Dore is still mad at me in October 2020. I thought he retired after TYT got rid of him. That's what Dave Weigel says. And I said, wait, Dave Weigel is still mad at me in December 2020? <laughs> I thought he went into porn after Ron Jeremy was arrested. <laughs> so isn't that funny? Just a month ago, he was like, wait, Jimmy Dore's still mad at me? And here it is, this motherfucker tweeting about me in December, which is awesome. We're, we're taking up a lot of space in a lot of people's minds, Ron. Mm -hmm. So mm. just a month later, I got to turn that joke around on him. Wasn't that fun? <laughs> Isn't that fun? I love it. I got to turn that joke around on him. It's so fun. And then and the fact that he looks just like a uh, sweaty, uh, greasy, oily Ron Jeremy is fantastic. So Ron actually confronted Ron Jeremy. <laughs> I mean, uh, Dave I... Weigel. <laughs> <laughs> so Dave Weigel wrote that smear piece about me. Uh insinuating that I was pushing a conspiracy about Seth Rich, which was complete bullshit, and he knows it, because Ron's going to confront him at a Bernie rally in, was this, 2018? Yeah, this was a little while ago. So when they wrote, so when they write, when they, so they say so this wrote, an, I think the Daily News or the New York Post just wrote an article about hashtag force to vote, and they link to Dave Weigel's article, and they say he's a con Jimmy Dore push conspiracy, rest there, and they link to his article. So that'll happen forever. And Dave knew that he was doing that when he wrote that article. And he was told to write that article by his boss. And he was told to put my name in it. And so he did it. That's how this works. Dave Weigel was given that assignment and he did it because he's a good boy. He's a pro-war Jeff Bezos willing tool. And he's a good boy and he did it. And so here's Ron confronting him about doing that about putting us and giving us a bullshit smear in the Washington Post because he was told to, and it wasn't true. None of it was fucking true. We covered the Seth Rich story in one day because uh, there was a, it was a press conference about it, and then we debunked it the next day and never talked about it again on our show. Never. Here we go. Dave, Yo, how are you, man? Ron Placone from the Jimmy Dore Show. Oh, hello. How are you doing today? Fine. What brings you? No, let just just watch how many times he drink. He is shitting his pants right now. This is what this is what he looks like when he's shitting his pants because he's going to get confronted. And he knows it. Well, he, he, and like to give a little like give a context. I saw him, and I was like, "Oh man, that's Dave Weigel." So we pretty much like just ran to catch him, and uh, he started moving quicker. I don't know if that means he saw me or not. I, I don't know for sure. Ah. But he started moving quicker, and then I caught up to him. And um, we had the camera hidden because I, you know, I don't know. They they just thought that was better. They're like, let's just hide the camera so he doesn't like. So he'll just kind of like say whatever he's gonna say. So as we watch this, I'm not sure that he knew he was being filmed. I mean, I told him 
But there were more than one occasion, you know, this has been like, um, you know, not everything's been included in this. On more than one occasion, he asked, where's the camera? Where's the camera? Mm -hmm. So I think he might have thought I was just messing with him the whole time. And this wasn't actually being filmed because he actually admits to a lot of things as far as I'm concerned. I agree. I agree that he admits to a lot of things. Watch this. Here today, are you covering this for the Washington Post? Yes, where's the camera? It's everywhere, man. We got the same drone programs Bezos does. You know what I mean, man? First of all, <laughs> that's a great line. <laughs> yes, it is. That's a great line. <laughs> Where are the, where's the camera? He's looking. It's everywhere, man. We got the drones just like Bezos, baby. <laughs> and he's thirsty. And he's really thirsty. Look how he's, he's drinking again. He can't stop drinking. Dude, he's uh, drinking. So what, what are you here for today? Like, I'm sorry, say you cover. He kept drinking after everything was gone. Like there was nothing left. There's nothing in, in it. And he's still like sucking a, on it. Yeah. Like, like, like. Yeah, a, I almost felt bad. I was like, do you need me to buy you another one? Like, what's your problem? Okay. Specifically. Well, I was in Northern California earlier this week uh, talking to the candidates running for district attorney, progressive district attorney candidates. And uh, this is kind of a capstone to that. I did the interviews already. Uh, Who all did you cover? Uh, in Alameda, in uh, No Phillips, in Sacramento. Uh, Contra Costa County, where it's kind of a, an incumbent who's progressive running for for a full term. And then um, that might be it, because there's a Genevieve running in San Diego, but I don't think I'll have time to cover her. I just talk, you know, do an interview, and that'll be it. Okay, I know we've had our differences, right. but uh, what's your favorite prog band, Jethro Tull or Gentle Giant? Oh, in, in that binary choice, Gentle Giant. When did Gentle Giant make their Aqualung, though? Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I would say I, I like Octopus as much as I like Aqualung, but that's me. That's me and, like, their family members, probably, who, who feel this way. Okay, now Ron's going to get into it. Here we go. <laughs> Will you be a little more fair to the Jimmy Dore show next time? Fair to the show? I mean, yeah. I can. I, I, I don't interact with it very much. I just thought, I thought it was very, um, you know, I like people who show up and cover stuff, so... I just uh, felt like some of the accusations, like as somebody who works very hard to cover this beat, I was like, "Come on, just look at the look at the work." Don't. Well, what specifically are you referring to? We get. He got a drink. Got a drink. After every lie, he drinks. You can unpack this. <laughs> so he's trying to pretend that our dispute was uh, not over him lying about Jeff Bezos' contract with the CIA. He's trying to say our dispute was that. Uh, I, I, he didn't think it affected the Washington Post as much as I thought it did. That's what he's trying to say. Yes. No, the fact that he has that contract, Dave Weigel publicly lied about it, and then when he was proven wrong, he then gaslit. Doesn't matter. Tried to cover up that he lied. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right now. Nothing specific. It's been nothing specific. Oh, just the, um, uh, just attacking the the ownership and all that. Like, I just plow ahead. I travel. I talk to people. So. I, I speak for attacking the ownership of what? The Washington Post? Yeah, that whole thing. Their owner has a $600 million deal with the CIA, <laughs> and they never disclosed that. But why, did, why did you deny it on Twitter? That, that was the kind of thing we got on. I didn't deny it. Well, you kind of did. Yes, he did. We just showed that. Yes, he did. And he, now he's lying about it and pretending he has to drink. And I mean, we, you know, we have the screenshots. So instead of copping to it, Dave Weigel lies. No, that's I. I remember what you're talking about, but I, I don't think. Oh my God! I'm trying to think him. about this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember. I remember that that disagreement was about. I think just conceptually, I. I think you should look at the work the paper produces and you know quibble with part of it. And well, don't you think you should look at the work we produce too? Because I, I felt like you were a little. Uh, uh, a little unfair in the way you summarized how we talked about Seth Rich. What he's doing is he's putting me in the middle of that fucking article about fake news and Seth Rich and pretending that I was misreporting it. We covered it in real time as it was going on. We asked questions like, why is only one network covering this? Where's the evidence? I mean, we were just asking questions because it was going on in real time. And when we found out that guy didn't actually see the stuff that he said he saw, we said that. We were like, okay, so this guy was kind of bullshitting, but you sort of smeared us a little unfairly. What about the Joe Rogan appearance? After so now he's trying to say what... So Ron's talking about the article that he wrote, and he's saying, you smeared us. We did, we did normal journalism, and you made it look like we did bad journalism. And he's saying, but what about what Jimmy said on, on Joe Rogan about Seth Rich? That happened after his article came out. And by the way, I said dick about Seth Rich on Joe Rogan. That was Joe Rogan. 
I didn't say fucking anything for this very reason. I didn't say fucking anything. And he's he, again, he's lying that I said it and I didn't say anything. And but Ron's got him. Here we go. Bad. The Jimmy did. What are you talking about? He went, he... That was that was long after your article, Dave. We're oh, talking about your article that. and we're talking about the content Ooh, that it. we made that you talked about. Yeah, that you wrote about. It's honestly not important to me. I mean, I had that. I just, I just smeared a guy's entire career that will follow him forever because I put it in the Washington Post. And it's not that important to him. That's who Dave Weigel is. I was given an order to go smear a progressive, put him in the middle of this article, make him look like a fucking maniac, like he was doing bad journalism. And it doesn't really matter to Dave, to Dave Weigel. That's what he said, right, Ron? Yeah, I mean, as I watched it again for the first time in a while, there was a lot of like, Ah, uh, you're just a pleb. I don't have time to think about this. But, you know, I'm not that easily insulted. So I just kind of kept going. <laughs> yeah. Whenever he got ridiculous, just kind of started laughing in his face. So yes, it was great. What I are you going to do? He made that you talked about. Yeah, that you wrote about. It's honestly not important to me. I mean, I had that, that argument on Twitter a while ago. And it like... <laughs> Among other things I've done this year is not tweet that much because I, I feel like the utility of having these arguments in public is pretty low. But no, I mean, I'm not going to relitigate all that, all that stuff. I made my, pe made my point. When was that? Do you feel like maybe you're a little unfair to us? I, I, I would need to go back and look at like the screen of all the stuff I said because I honestly... <laughs> Dave Weigel, instead of being a guy with integrity and character and admitting it and going, you got me. Yeah, that's a, that's a problem. He tries to gaslight the guy and smear the source. That's what they do. They smear the source. Just like Dave Weigel smeared me. It was a year of many online arguments. But I felt like it was a lot of... The, 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 the tone I didn't like was, you can't trust what this paper is doing because of these arguments that people have. Uh, because no, no the, the argument was, you can't trust what they're saying when they talk about the CIA or the Pentagon or the military or Russiagate because they're not disclosing in those stories that they have a conflict of interest. And the fact that they're intentionally keeping their conflict of interest from their readers is unethical. That's unethical. That's what that's called. That's called unethical. Oh, he's trying to make it out to be just like I was being unfair to him. No, you guys are are not disclosing, which is what Norman Solomon wrote in that article, that you're supposed to disclose that you guys have a conflict of interest when you have one, especially when you're writing about the CIA. And that and so now he's trying to he's again. It, look, look at that fucking book. That's when someone's lying. That's what he looks like when he's lying. All right, the, owner, the, 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 con, the tone I didn't like was you can't trust what this paper is doing because of these arguments that people have, uh, because of the ownership and all that. And I was like, that's just... As some well, we, were, we, were, we weren't blanketing everyone as a whole, but we were bringing up the ownership, which does bring about some conflicts of interest. And that's in all the corporate media. The Washington Post is not unique in that regard, but that's all the corporate media. Would you not agree with that? Somebody who criticized a lot of TV, which I think covers gossip entertainment i mean look at the i agree the amount of roseanne coverage versus the amount of puerto rico coverage for example mm. i think that's a generally good critique i felt like it was i think if i remember that exact weekend i was driving around talking to congressional candidates and i was like i'm out here actually trying to cover this story so just like read read the work don't don't go after a vendetta with uh, the ownership yeah if I, if I but again i don't remember it very well it was like one argument i had in a year of maybe 5,000 online arguments. I don't remember smearing a guy who was doing good journalism and fucking him, fucking him up for the rest of his career that will follow him because now it's in a Wikipedia entry with a link to his story. And he was ordered to do that. There's no doubt about it that he was ordered to do that. He was ordered to smear me. He was ordered to try... They were, they, I was, I'm a threat to the Democratic Party, and he was given an order to... Uh, to, to try to dismiss me, to try to smear me so they can get to get rid of me. So hang on, there's more to this. Why do you get in so many online arguments, Dave? I don't anymore. I like, ch I chilled on it after. Is that your New Year's resolution? Kind of, yeah. I mean, I just to focus, it's going to be a busy midterm year. So like, let me point out stuff that's true or false on Twitter occasionally. Otherwise, like, don't, don't bother. You want to take a selfie, man, so we can kind of have the peace flag? You want to take, I mean, I don't know if you'll be able to see it because you blocked me on Instagram, Instagram but we'll, uh. All right, okay. You have to unblock me if you want to see it, my man. On Instagram? Yeah, you blocked me on Instagram. <laughs> I appreciate you. All right, buddy. Talk to me. 
I, yeah, why not, man? But I honestly... Life's too short to hold grudges, Dave. It is, and so I remember I first interacted with Jimmy during the California primary, and I remember seeing him swarmed by Bernie Sanders fans. I wrote a piece about, like, the Young Turks and the fell following... It's amazing he remembers that. He remembers that completely clearly. That was even way... He remembers so many things about you. He remembers uh, TYT. He remembers that event. He remembers Joe Rogan. But he doesn't remember uh, what he said in that article uh, and, and why it was bullshit. He he doesn't remember that. Doesn't remember what he said about me in that article and why it was bullshit. But he does remember I was on Joe Rogan. Yeah, you're right. He remembers everything about me. Here we go. Had and the people who thought it was covering campaigns in a way that was not being interpreted in media, which at that point, this is like the California primary when most of the mainstream media coverage of Bernie was like, who gives a shit anymore, right? You know, you poked fun at the joke writing, Dave, and I write a lot of those jokes. <laughs> Can you point out to a joke that you didn't really like, a joke you didn't care for? <laughs> we just saw uh, Dave Weigel, the reporter for the Washington Post, come by with his fake mustache on again. So now he's decided to try to grow a goatee, but it doesn't seem like he has enough testosterone. A guy named Hector Madrigal treated this. He says, why are these the top searches for Dave Weigel? And the top search, it says Dave Weigel mustache. <laughs> so that's uh, Dave Weigel from the Washington Post and his fake mustache. Can you point out to a joke that you didn't really like, a joke you didn't care for? I, <laughs> I've forgotten many more things than like jokes I don't remember. I don't think I've, I've kept the mental space for the jokes. I mean, but my I generally don't like the kind of the humor that's like this is things outrageous laugh at the outrageous thing I, like, I don't think I've ever used the word outrageous in a joke actually okay but in general the check out this thing let's it clears a clip we laughed at the clip it's like I didn't like it that much of this daily show trope but I don't like it an online trope what do you prefer people going through an article and like busting on it in a funny way I like that Dave Weigel literally in this this article that is supposed to debunk fake news, he literally prints a talking point from the Democrats. Maybe the mustache is getting it tickles him. And Dave Weigel's not a great writer. I mean, as far as writing where you're entertained by it, Dave Weigel, if he had any character, would be embarrassed that he wrote that in a fucking newspaper article for the Washington Post. Well, Dave, I appreciate your willingness to talk to us. No, I, I appreciate you coming over. I'm All right. Enjoy covering the event. These kind of fights are annoying to have, and I honestly don't wish I remembered more of it. To, but I also need to get credentialed for this thing, so I'm gonna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for pointing me to that. And remember, punching left is never fun. Have fun at the tent, buddy. All right. Thank you very much. It's killing him. Kill him. All right, guys. So I just got to catch up with Dave Weigel. We have had our differences. Uh, but you know, I felt like we maybe covered a little ground, maybe smoked the peace pipe a little bit. Uh, he prefers Gentle Giant over Jethro Tull, which proves that when it comes to progressive politics and progressive music, Dave has a little bit to learn. But hopefully, <laughs> he's evolving on some things. We'll see what progress he made. I'm going to post that selfie on Instagram. If he unblocks me, maybe he'll like it. We'll follow up. Our next live Jimmy Dore show is... Okay. Okay. <laughs> I think I just texted you the selfie with no context too, if I if I remember correctly. Oh, that day you you were sick, remember? Yeah, I couldn't go down there. Yeah, you were sick. Like we were all gonna go down, and then you were sick, so you didn't go down. So like like I went, I still went down, and then yeah, I'm pretty sure I just texted you that selfie with like no other context. I just texted it to you, <laughs> and you were like, okay, and I'm like, oh, there's more to come. I was like, Ron Jeremy's at a Bernie rally. That is so wild. <laughs> that is so wild. So that's you see Dave Reigel, he they're, these Pete these guys they're they're fucking nothing a, a puff of wind will blow them away they're fucking did you see how he shit his pants when Ron walked up to him with a microphone these guys are nothing these guys are hired fucking goons and they'll do whatever they're told. That's what Dave Weigel does. He's a pro-war maniac. He doesn't know what the fucking up is down, left is right. He's against Medicare for he's against hashtag the vote. Hashtag forced to vote. He's fucking, he's a willing tool. He, of course, he works for the Washington Post. Of course, he's their lead political guy for progress. Of course, they hired a pro-war fucking Republican to cover progressives. Of course they did. Well, and also, this is video evidence that this guy can't stand behind his smear. Yeah. I broke down exactly what we did. And if you go back and watch those videos, that's exactly what happened. And I pretty much said, what what was done wrong, Dave? What And he, he, I mean, you guys just watched it. Yeah. 
He had nothing. He had no leg to stand on whatsoever. So any journalist, whoever cites that article, whoever links to that article, they are being grossly lazy and irresponsible. And I would love to see that every time someone does that in the future, this freaking video is going to be right underneath it, where you have video footage of the writer himself not being able to stand by it. And what a sad media structure where that's considered an esteemed journalist. That's con- <laughs> that guy, that guy, that guy is considered an esteemed journalist. That guy who crumbled under questioning in, by, in front of Ron Placone. Ron Placone crumbled. I am I- five foot four. <laughs> and he crumbled. I mean, just throw that out there. <laughs> and the guy crumbled. I used to be five ten. I'm five seven. He crumbled. <laughs> That was great, Ron. Really, you were you were you were you were the quintessential comedian interviewing a fucking uh, 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 corrupt nerd. That was wonderful. Well, I mean, I'm I'm glad. I mean, I know we've been kind of like sitting on it, waiting for the right time, and uh, you know, I, I'm glad this is out there in the world now because that article has been cited and recirculated so many times, and now it's like, well. Here's video footage of this guy admitting that he has no clue what he's talking about, admitting that there was no basis of that smear. It was just a baseless smear. Um, and it is at best just lazy work. So you well, could so you could say Dave Weigel, Washington Post reporter, admits uh to smearing Jimmy Dore over Seth Rich. Would that be an accurate title? It'd be more accurate than his article he wrote about me. Yeah. Because he kind of admitted, I don't really remember. Well, you got it. Ah, what about Rogan? You got that out of Jimmy didn't say anything. I I would love to hear what he thought I said on Rogan. That would have been interesting. What he thought I said. Joe Rogan said that shit. I didn't say that stuff because Joe Rogan doesn't give a fuck about Dave Weichel. He doesn't care. He doesn't. Fuck. Joe Rogan was uh, the first time I did his show was such an eye opening when he told that he told me about how. He doesn't give a fuck. I mean, just it just I re, I re, I had to be reminded not to give a fuck. And Joe Rogan reminded me not to give a fuck about these people. And it was so helpful. And, you know, George Carlin says, if you look at that interview he did for the Radio Television Museum, he says uh, he says, uh, I didn't give a fuck. And that could be very helpful for to you in life. And that that can't and so it's helpful to me right now. I would never be able to do this hashtag force to vote push to catch all the shit I'm catching for it, all the character assassinations that it's coming my way if I gave a shit. If I really cared what a corrupt guy like Jenk Uger thought, that would be hard. If I really cared what a corrupt person like Anna Kasparian thought about me, that would be hard. Someone who gives tongue baths to to war criminals while being paid by NATO, someone who smears Julian Assange like the Young Turks does, I would that would bother me. But I don't. But I don't respect those people, and I don't. I don't give a fuck about them. And so that's why I'm able to do this right now. And it's very helpful. It's very helpful. Anything else you'd like to say about that? I'm just glad it's out, and I hope we can still have fun with it at a live show in the future, too. Absolutely. We were saving it for the right live show, and then it just never made it into the live show. And I had it loaded in a few of them. We just never got to it. And so that's uh, certainly a big regret. But here we are. We're doing it here. I'm sure when we play it at a live show, people will love to laugh together at it. Yeah. All right. Ron Placone. Everybody check out Ron Placone at Get Your News On with Ron. Uh, Is there anything else you're doing? I mean, right now, just kind of playing it by ear. I mean, you can uh, follow me on Twitter at Ron Placone and all the social media at Ron Placone, YouTube.com slash Ron Placone. And, um, you know, happy you know, holidays and happy new year to everybody. You know, Graham Elwood's cheating on you with Lee, I know, with Lee I know. Camp. Well, well, I told you, we talked about, we have an open podcast policy. <sighs> oh. Those never I mean, work. We've always, yeah. Well, I know you brought up New Year's Eve. And Wait yeah, till I mean, New Year's Eve. Up. Who's, who's Graham going to kiss on New Year's Eve? You or Lee Camp? I know. That's what we're all waiting to find out. So <laughs> we'll <gonna> live stream it. <laughs> all right, buddy. Ron Placone, thank you very much. That was such a great report you did. You so exposed Dave Weigel to be the lying, coward, smearing progressive reporters that he is. Thank you Happy so much. Happy holidays, guys. Okay, bye-bye. Happy holidays. Hey, everybody, this is the part where I tell you where all our live shows are, but there aren't any. And then this is why I tell you we join our premium program, get extra content, but nobody's got a fucking job. So just enjoy the video.